As we begin to learn Word 2016, we start by becoming familiar with the word environment. When referring to the term word environment, I mean the overall general way we get around in the program, access its features and functions, practically use it for what it was designed. Specifically, I mean using the graphical user interface as it is displayed on the screen to interact with the program to do our desired tasks with documents. In this segment of the course, we are going to be learning about the Word 2016 environment. Let's start Microsoft Word. By clicking on the Word icon, which should be located on your Windows taskbar, or if the program is not pinned to your taskbar, you can locate it by clicking on the Start icon on the taskbar where you will see the programs listed among the recently most often used programs. Look for the Word 2016 icon. If you don't see the Word 2016 program listed in the recently used programs when you press the Start icon, you should click on All Programs, which lists all the programs installed on your computer after you have clicked the Start icon. Look for the Word program icon, making sure it has the words Word 2016 next to it, because there are several versions of Microsoft Word. Each version of Word has a slightly different environment. This course teaches primarily how to use Word in the Word 2016 environment. You may have to scroll down to locate the word icon using the scroll bar alongside of the programs listed in all programs. When you have found Word 2016, click it and the Word 2016 program will be started. When we first start Word, we get the Word Open Document screen, which you see here. On the Word Open Document screen, we have what we call two panels, one to the left with the blue background where we see the word recent, and one to the right in gray background. On the left panel, as you can see, under recent, it shows documents recently opened this week. And under last week, it shows several documents which were opened. You can see the type of document, the document name, and below the names you can see the location where the documents are stored, including what folder. Clicking on one of the recent documents will automatically open that document for editing, viewing, or printing. Below the recent documents area on the left panel, under the horizontal line, you have an option to open other documents. Here where there is a small folder icon. Clicking on Open Other Documents will give you further options for opening pre-existing documents from the different locations they may be stored, which we will do further into the course. For now, we will be focusing on getting into the Word environment by creating a new document. Let's look to the panel on the right. On this panel, we get to create our new documents by clicking Blank Document, which will open Word in the document editing mode with a new blank document in its text area so you can draft, edit, format, view and print from scratch. This is what we will do first. But, before we click on the blank document icon, I want you to take a quick look while we are on this panel of the document open screen at the document templates you see. You notice here that we can choose from a variety of already pre-existing formatted documents already set up and designed for specific use, allowing fast and easy creation of a variety of types of documents based on templates by just clicking. We will create a document based on a template later in the course. But for now, let's continue to create our new document by clicking the blank document icon. So we click blank document. Word opens a new blank document and we are now in the Word environment. The Word environment is made up of different areas on the screen which give you access to its functions, features, and information about your document as well as a text area where the actual document editing is done. Let's go over them. The title bar. Take a look at the top of your screen, in the middle, where you see document 1. This is the title bar. When we open a new document, Word entitles it temporarily document 1 because it has not yet been saved and given a name. When we save our document after drafting, the name we give it will be displayed here in the title bar. Any document we open will always display its name here in the title bar. You will notice this as we begin to save and open documents.
The ribbon area. The most important area of the word environment is the blue and gray area above. You see here at the top, which is called the ribbon area. The ribbon area is composed of your document title bar, as you're familiar with, a menu system consisting of different tabs, which group like functions and commands together, a commands bar, a window control bar, and a quick access toolbar. Let's demonstrate quickly the menu system by looking at a couple of different tabs. Click on the review tab. You see a bunch of different icons which are grouped together and separated according to their likeness and their function on what is called the command bar. The review tab is used generally for going over your document as it's being drafted and edited to prepare it for final. As you see here, you have icons with commands grouped for proofing such as spelling, thesaurus, and word count. And there are options for comments and tracking of editing changes. Let's click on the page layout tab. The page layout tab contains the features that relate to causing the desired format for your document layout to happen. The way text and images display and print on the page are manipulated here. Here you see on the commands bar a bunch of icons grouped together and separated according to their likeness and function. You see that margins, size, orientation, and columns are all grouped together under page setup. You can also see that here you have options grouped together under paragraph for affecting changes in indent and spacing. Tabs group like features and functions similarly, allowing you to locate the commands for what you need to do more easily by knowing what type of function it is. And as you can see here, once you go to a tab, the commands on that tab are grouped according to their likeness and function. So this is largely how the menu tab system works. The ribbon is the key element in manipulating your document in the Word environment. In order to use a particular feature or function, you just go to that menu tab and click on the icon command or setting to make it happen. The Home tab. The Home tab contains the most frequently used commands for formatting and editing a document. Let's click on the Home tab. We see icons grouping commands on the clipboard for cutting, pasting, copying, and format painting. A font grouping for bold, italics, underline, setting type, face, and size, and other font options. We see a set of commands grouped together as icons under paragraph, where we can adjust the paragraph, like centering. Here we do things like set the alignment for our paragraph, its line spacing, bullet or number or list, or other things related to formatting a paragraph. We also have paragraph styles we can apply just by clicking on one of the choices in the options among the selections grouped under styles. Under editing, you have find and replace, and you have the select option for selecting text or objects for editing. So, there's a great deal you can do just on the home tab of the ribbon menu alone to format and edit your document. We will be going over using these features and functions further in the course, but now let's continue learning about the Word environment. The Window Control Bar if you've used Windows, then you already know about the window control bar above, at the top on the screen, to the right. The three icons group together ending with an X in a box, and an overlapping box icon in the middle, with a small line to the left of it. These three icons control the word window we are in, and allow us to resize or minimize it, meaning remove it from the screen and place it on the taskbar below if we click the small line. Let's click it now we see that the word window has been taken off the desktop. Click the Word 2016 icon we used to start the program and we see that the minimized word window is redisplayed back on the desktop. We can resize and move around our word window by clicking the overlapping box called the restore icon. Clicking it we see how the word window is resized. If you are not familiar with sizing windows you just move your pointer to a corner of the resized window until you get a small diagonal arrow with heads on both sides. Click and drag, as you see here, to size your window. To move the resized window, click on the title bar, hold, and move your cursor to position the window on the screen where you desire. Restoring a resized window to its maximum is done simply by pressing the overlapping box icon or restore icon again to toggle the word window back to maximum as you see here. 
The X icon in the window control bar is used, as you may already know, to close the Word program. So by clicking it, you will be exiting out of all documents. The Word program will close and you will be returned to the desktop. The Quick Access Toolbar. There is an area on the ribbon called the Quick Access Toolbar, which appears here at the top on the left. Here on the Quick Access Toolbar, we have commands we most often want quick access to without having to go to a menu tab or look for a command or function. Generally, by default, on the Quick Access Toolbar, you will find, as you see here, a disk icon used to quickly save the document when clicked, instead of using the menu system to perform this function. Also, you generally have a curly arrow pointing to the left for quickly undoing functions performed that you want undone, for whatever reason, that is called the undo button. You generally also have a curly arrow pointing the opposite direction, to the right, for redoing functions that have been undone, but you have a change of mind and want to be restored. This icon is called the redo button. These three functions by default are the quick access toolbar functions. However, the quick access toolbar can be customized to include other features, functions, or commands, but clicking on the down pointing arrowhead icon with a line above it, always located at the end of the quick access toolbar, as you see here, called the customized quick access toolbar icon. When we click on the customized quick access toolbar icon, we get a drop down menu listing the frequently used features on the quick access toolbar. You can see here that save is checked, undo is checked, and redo is checked. Here you see on the menu that you have available also several others such as new, open, spelling, and grammar, as well as print, preview, and quick print, but you see no check marks. By clicking on an unchecked item in the drop down menu, it is added to the quick access toolbar as you see here when I click on new. You now see that there is an icon of what is supposed to be a sheet of paper with the right corner folded down added to the Quick Access Toolbar. Watch as I repeat this for the open option on the customized Quick Access Toolbar menu. You see that I click the last icon on the customized Quick Access Toolbar and get the drop down menu, then click on the open option, and as you see now, a folder icon also appears on the Quick Access Toolbar. Removing icons from the Quick Access Toolbar is just the same. Just access the customized menu and uncheck the items as I'm doing here. The customized quick access toolbar menu also gives you the option to add the touch mode icon to your quick access toolbar as you see here. As I check it, it appears in the toolbar. If you have a touch sensitive screen device, you can touch this icon to use the touch feature with words or you can use your mouse to click on the icon to execute the touch on off command. The customized quick access toolbar feature will allow you to add just about any function or command in Word to the quick access toolbar by selecting the more commands option on its menu. But generally these are the commands usually placed on the quick access toolbar. The last item on the customized quick access toolbar drop down menu is an option to show below the ribbon. This option when checked as you see here allows you to have the quick access toolbar displayed below the ribbon instead of at the top of the Word window where the title bar is. So you can customize the quick access toolbar for easy access to commonly used functions pretty easily by checking or not checking the option directly from the customized quick access toolbar icon drop down menu. The ribbon control icon. At the top of the ribbon just to the left of the window control area notice the icon you see here. This icon is the ribbon control icon and it gives you the option to display the ribbon in one of three different ways. The way we are looking at the ribbon presently is the option where we show tabs and commands at all times. This is the most common way the ribbon is displayed and is generally the default. Let's click on the ribbon control icon. You see that we also have an option to show tabs only. This option will only show the tabs of the ribbon menu and in order to see the commands associated with the tab, you just click on the tab to see its commands. Watch as I demonstrate. I click on Show Tabs, telling Word to only show the ribbon tabs, hiding the command bar, which shows the commands, until I click on the tab as I'm demonstrating here. When I click on a tab now, it shows the commands for that tab, but when I move away from the ribbon, the commands are hidden and only the tabs are shown.
You also have an option on the ribbon control icon menu to auto hide ribbon, which will hide the ribbon entirely, automatically when you move away from it. And in order to have the ribbon displayed, you just click the top of the word program window as I'll demonstrate here. Watch as I click on auto hide ribbon. And now, move the pointer away from the ribbon. You see that the ribbon automatically hides itself and stays hidden. In order to display the ribbon at any time, I just click at the top of the application to show it. I like using the program with both the tabs and commands displayed. And at any time you want to change the ribbon display setting, you can do so by just clicking on the ribbon control icon. That's all for the ribbon area, which is the key component of the Word environment, with the exception of the built-in help feature of Word 2016. We'll be going over the Word 2016 help feature and the other few elements of the Word 2016 environment that are left below the ribbon in the next lesson of the course.